I'm sure you've heard about the famous Wireshark network sniffing tool, which is used to understand protocols, debug issues on the network, and of course, analyzing traffic. The Wireshark uses the libraries on Linux and Windows called libpcap and wimpycap, Linux packet capture and Windows packet capture. As you might have seen before, if you use this tool, you will get lots of lots of lots of traffic. So the secret to effectively use the tool is to use the capture and display filters. So before demonstrating how Wireshark works, let's go back to basics and see how we establish a basic TCP connection. So actually, when there is communication between the client and a server, the client sends a SYN packet. The server replies back with a SYN ACK packet. Then the client confirms back with an ACK packet. And here the connection is established. So this is a full round of TCP connection. You might have seen that the server always replies with the sequence number plus one then the client replies with the sequ with a previous sequence number plus one no need here to go into the details we're just explaining that in order to make an effective use of the wireshark similarly the same thing goes when we are terminating a connection a three-way handshake as well so the client sends the server a fin packet then the server replies with a fin ACK packet, then the client confirms with an ACK packet and the connection is terminated. What we will demonstrate here in the next live example is this scenario. From our Kali machine, we will connect using our previous example, the netcat, and we will try to use the previous example of texting using the chatting between the client and the server. Then we will fetch the traffic and analyze the traffic and see what happened. So here, if you want to open Wireshark, you go to, on, to the menu under sniffing and spoofing. First of all, you need to filter the interface that you want to capture traffic on. If you can see here, by default, you have lots of filters, and if you capture all the traffic coming on these filters, you'll end up with a huge amount of data and information. So we are interested in only filtering or using the wired interface, with, which is basically the Ethernet interface. So after that, we press on the Start Capturing Packet here. It is very important to understand the layout of the Wireshark. It is divided into four parts. The lower part here is the network as you can see it's a low level data hex data bits etc the upper part here is the capture filter so based on the filter that we identified before the capturing is taking place here this section here is the capture engine it's actually capturing the traffic based on the capture filters we defined before and on top here you will see the display filters after we stop the packet capturing you will of course end up with a huge amount of data and this is the best way on filtering and querying the data that we will end up with. Now it's working fine and it's sniffing the traffic. We will go to the cloud server here, netcat, and we will invoke this command. So here we will open port 2222 and we will listen to any traffic coming on port 2222. From our Kali machine, we will open a terminal and we will invoke this command, which is a netcat, then nv option, then the target IP address, and then the target port. Now we were able to establish a connection between Kali machine and the Windows cloud machine. Remember the chat example we did before? Let's do it here all over again. Hello from Kali. Then we go to the machine here. We will see the text prompting. We can reply back. And if you go here to the Kali again, we will be able to see the message. So now a certain activity has been taking place between the client and the server. Now we can go here to the Wireshark and stop the packet capturing. This is a small file, but in the, in the real world scenario, you might end up with a huge amount of, of data here. So these display filters will help us a lot in working with the file. We can filter based on the source address, the destination address, the protocol type, and the port. For example, if we can go to just press IP dot source, and the source here in this case is 211.130 and you press enter you'll be able to get this information here if you want to search on the destination 
173.248.132.230. Here you go. As you can see here, the data contains R protocol, NBNS, another R protocol, then TCP protocol, etc. If you want to filter on the TCP protocol, just write here TCP and then press enter. You will see here what happened actually in the previous example. The Kali machine with the source IP of 130 initiated a connection with our cloud server here. As you can see, this is the start of the three-way handshake. This is the SYN packet and then the SYN ACK packet and then the ACK packet. Then connection has been established. If you want, you can follow a stream in order to get the cream. So if you right click here and then follow, TCP stream, it will actually give us the end result of actually what happened in this connection here. Now, if you start capturing packets again, suppose that I don't want to save this and go here to my Kali machine and stop this connection. I'll stop the traffic again and filter again for TCP. You will see the three way handshake for terminating the connection. Thin, FinAG and then the AG packet.